Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to try to explain you what is REST and what is our REST API. So let's get started. So first of all, what is REST? REST is an architectural style which is based on web standards and the HTTP protocol. This style was initially described by Roy Fielding in the year 2000. Roy Fielding was also one of the principal author of HTTP specifications. Now REST is an acronym standing for Representational State Transfer. So as I said that REST is an architectural style of web. But what does this even mean? So REST is a set of design criteria and not the physical structure or architecture of the system. So it's just a design criteria, right? So REST is not tied to web that is, it doesn't depend on the mechanics of HTTP. Now in REST-based architecture, everything is a resource. And what is a resource? A REST resource is a data on which we want to perform operations. So this data can be present on the database on the server side. For example, uh, some employee data which have some unique identification. For example, employee ID. Now this resource is accessed via a common interface based on HTTP standard methods, which we will learn a little bit later. So let me give you a more concrete example. So in REST based architecture, you have a REST server, which provides the access to the resource. So for example, this is our REST server, which provides the access to the resource, which is there in the database or in some form of records. Now, on the other hand, we have a REST client, which is used to access and modify the REST resource. Now in REST architecture, every resource should support the HTTP common operation. So let me give you a more concrete example. So let's say we want to create a weather app. Now weather app is dependent on the weather data. Now let's say this weather data is saved every day or every hour in some database, which can be accessed from a REST server, for example. So in a REST-based architecture, you have a REST server, which provides an access to the resource. In our case, it's a weather data of some city, for example, and you have a REST client. REST client can access or modify the REST resource, okay? Now, every resource should support the HTTP common operation. Now, how this resource is identified? So, resources are identified by a global ID, which are typically called URIs, which stands for Uniform Resource Identifier, and in some cases, it's called URL, which stands for Uniform Resource Locator. So you can consider this URI as an address of the resource. So for example, we want to access the temperature of city London. Now this request can be sent from a client in the form of URI, you can see here. So for example, first of all, this resource is under the country name UK, for example and then the resource name London. Now, if we think logically, a resource must have at least one URI, right? So if the resource doesn't have any URI, how will you access this resource? So in REST architecture, you must have a URI to access or modify this report. For example, if you don't have this URI UK forward slash London, how will you identify this resource in the REST server? And these URI should be descriptive, that is human passable and have some structure. So for example, in our example, uh, I have given this URI UK, which is a country name, and then the city name, for example. Now, if you want to know the temperature of some other city in some other country, for example, we want to know the temperature of uh, city Munich, then you can write Germany as a country here and then forward slash you can write the city name which is Munich in our case. Now REST allows the resource to have different representations, right? So for example, this request is sent to a REST server 
and on the request this rest server accesses the london's temperature report and then how or in which representation it should send the result and in which format this data is returned to the client is called a representation right and rest allows this resource to have different representation it can send an xml representation of the result or it can send json representation of the result or in most of the cases it can also send html as a representation now in rest clients decide which kind of representation it want to have so for example client sends this information that i want this result in the representation of json right so client send this request to the server that which form of representation of result it wants so let's go to the rest definition once again so why rest is called representational state transfer so representational state transfer refers to transferring representation in our case we have seen the representation can be sent in the form of json or text or html or xml in any representation so we are using the representation of resource to transfer this resource state which lives on the server into the application state which is on the client okay so representational because client possesses the information necessary to identify modify or delete a web resource and client decide which form of representation of the result now the word state comes in rest because all resource state information is stored on the client side so you can say that your server or your rest server is stateless it doesn't have any state all the states are stored on the client side and transfer because client state is passed from the client to the server through http now let's discuss about http methods supported by rest so these are some of the most important methods which are supported by rest architecture so you have get which is used to retrieve representation of resource you have put method to update or modify existing resources and in some special cases we use put to create a new resource also now we have post to create a new resource and delete method to delete an existing resource now rest have two another less commonly used methods which are had and option so had method fetches the metadata of representation only so it doesn't have any body and the method options checks which http method a particular resource supports so most of the time when you are designing your rest architecture you will be using these four method which are frequently used when you design your rest architecture which are get put post and delete now there are five basic software architectural style principle in rest so the principle one is everything is a resource so in rest architectural style data and functionality are considered as resource and are accessed using a uri now the second principle is every resource is identified by a unique identifier using uris now the third principle is you have to use simple and uniform interfaces so use simple and standard interfaces to define your rest architecture so for example in our temperature or weather information uh, example we have defined a very simple and uniform interface so we have defined a country name and then inside a country name there is a city name so whenever we provide the country name and then a city name and for example we want to uh, access the temperature of some particular area of that city we can even request that temperature using this uri so use simple and standard interfaces for defining your rest architecture now the fourth principle is communication is done by representation so for example rest server can send a representation in the form of xml 
or JSON or text or any other form on the client's request. And the last principle is be stateless. That means every request happens in complete isolation. Now the next question arises is what is a REST API? So first of all, we need to understand what is API. So API stands for Application Programming Interface and an API is a set of subroutine definitions, protocols and tools for building application software. Now a REST API is an application program interface that uses HTTP request to get, put, post and delete some resources. Now let me give you a simple example to explain a REST API. So let's say we have a resource, for example, some dishes inside a kitchen. So these can be considered as resources, right? Now a client comes and he wants to order some dishes from the kitchen but he cannot directly go to the kitchen and then take whatever he wants so the user uses some intermediate service to access this resource and this is the job of an api which is waiter in our case so a rest api accesses this resource on the client's request and then responds this representation of uh, the result to the client. So we can say that our REST API is a intermediate service to access some resources. Now a real world example of that can be a Twitter API or a Google Map API or for example Facebook's Graph APIs. So for example we want to make an app which uses for example Facebook's Graph API to know who have the most popular page on Facebook you can use Facebook's graph API for that or for example if you want to post something on Twitter using the Twitter's rest API you can do that also so let me give you this real world example so open your browser and search for API GE console okay so search for API GE console and you will be able to see this uh, website which is apigee.com forward slash console so when you go inside this website you will be able to see different apis here okay and you will be able to see uh, for example facebook's api yahoo weather api and so many different kind of apis so for example we want to use a twitter api which is already selected here or you can even select it from here so for example let's say i want to do a tweet on my twitter account using this api how can i do it so i will select this twitter api and you can see this is the service which is api.twitter.com version 1.1 and i need to give some authentication so i need to give some credentials from my side to log into my Twitter account and then only I will be able to do some tweet right so for authentication I will choose uh, OAuth 1 here so just choose this option OAuth 1 and then just select sign in with Twitter it is going to ask for your permission I will just say authorize app and now this app is logged in with my credentials right and now I can do some tweet and on the left hand side I will search for uh, the tweets section here and then I will just select this option which says statuses update.json which uses this HTTP post method right so I will select this option from here which is going to give you this kind of uh, URL so you can see the resource we want to access here is statuses and then update.json and this is uh, the status we want to post so for example here from here I'm going to just delete this status which is the default status and I will just write here rest stands for representational state transfer and now I'm going to just send this uh, tweet and I receive the status code 200 that means my tweet has been tweeted and you can see this response here right and I can see here that this tweet is posted on my Twitter account you can see 
West stands for representational state transfer, which I have done using this Twitter's REST API. Now the last example I want to give here is the REST server I created using Node.js. So this is a very basic REST server, which is used to create, update, delete, or get the blog posts. So a blog can have post, and then the post can have some comments, and you can have also a profile of the person who is posting this blog post, right? Now this is a REST server, and I need to have a REST client in order to interact with this REST server. So generally in development, we use a tool called Postman REST Client, which is used to send REST based request from a client to a server. So open your web browser and search for Postman REST Client. And the first link which will appear here will be from getpostman.com. And then you can directly download this for your operating system. And once you download and install it, it will look like this, okay? So this is a simple uh, user interface of Postman client. From here, you can send any request to your server. So my server is running on localhost port 3000. So I'm going to just write here, HTTP colon double forward slash localhost port 3000. And for example, I want to just send the get request from here. And let's see on the server side, I'm using this db.json as my database. So for example, you can see there is only one post existing in this JSON database. And I want to access this post resource, right? So what I can do here is I can just send a request on post. So this is my resource. Posts is my resource. And let's say I want to just get the post whose ID is one. So I'm going to just write one here, right? And then I will just send this uh, request and then you can see I get this response. So for example, ID is equal to one, title is JSON server and author is codebind, which is also there on my JSON database. Now let's say I want to just retrieve the comments for post one, then I can just write instead of post, I can just uh, access the comment resource from here, right? So I can just send this request and this time I can just get the comments resources from this REST server. Now let's say I want to post a new post. So I will just send this request. So I will just use this resource post to post some data. And the method here I will use is post because I want to create a new blog post and format of this will be same as this one. So I'm going to just copy this format. And then in the body, I'm going to send this request. So just click on body. And then I will just say bulk edit. And I will send this request. So this time, the ID of the post will be two. The title will be for example, rest API and the author I want to leave it as same. So I will leave it as code bind. So this is my request body for the post, right? And then in the header, you can even write the content type, but by default, the postman sends the application JSON content type to the rest server. So I will leave it as default and I will just say send. And you can see here, the status I get here is 201 created. That means my post is successful and I receive the ID of the created post. Now in order to delete the post, I can choose the delete method from here and whatever post I want to delete. So for example, I will just write resource name posts and I want to delete the post two. So I will write the ID of the post two and then send the request. And then you can see I get 200 response. That means okay. And then this ID is deleted. And then when I do the get request for the post ID two, I will not receive any data about this. And when I request all the posts, then I will only get the post ID one because post ID two, I have already deleted. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please wait, comment and subscribe and bye for now.